Okay, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to First Metro Securities monthly wrap up with uh, the retail research team. Uh, my name is Paul and I'm Royce. So first half of the year is done. So what happened this past month? So we've weeks, most of the weeks we've been up. So this is the first of the first, this is the first week out of the last six weeks that the market is down. So let's see why. So before that, again, our usual recap. So the summary for this month, what to watch out for in July and our stock picks. So what happened in June? Okay, so basically this is what happened. Uh, for this month, June 2019, the PSEI went up by only 29.69 points or that's almost flattish, 37% at 7999.71. But don't be too deceived when we say that the PSEI ended flat because we are going to show you uh, how volatile this month is actually. So year to date, since this is um, a quarter end and a half year end, so the PSEI already went up by 533.7 points. As I was saying, uh, year to date, uh, the PSEI uh, is still up by 533.7 point, uh, points. So that translates to a 7.1% upside. So we will be giving you the reasons why the market went up and went down uh, during the past uh, couple of days. So what dragged the markets first? We have the trade war related developments. A lot of things happened this month because uh, the U.S. is currently waging its so-called trade war against not not only against China now, but also it has meant it has launched um, sanctions against China, India, Mexico, and Iran. So let's break it down one by one. So for China, this has already been ongoing even by the end of last year, so nothing to discuss much about that. What's interesting, however, is what he did with the other three. So in India, um, President Trump removed some items of Indian goods to the U.S. Uh, General System of Preference, or the GSP. So what this means that there will be additional uh, embargo or uh, tariffs which will be implemented by the U.S. to certain products which usually doesn't have a tariff. Uh, because of some exclusive rights, because of uh, the trade relationships with the parties. Reason for the removal to the GSP uh, is because it's in relation to um, the jobs. I think the U.S. is uh, trying to get back the jobs back to the country, and India is well known to be one of the top uh, BPO hubs. I'm, that means that most American firms would either go outside the country to outsource their uh, to outsource their um, labor, and one of the top candidates, top countries for the outsource is India. Then we have Mexico, as we all know, uh, we have that wall factor, the wall thing, and uh, lastly Iran. Lately, there has been uh, developments in the oil and that oil incident and uh, recall that Iran also shut down that $22 million prototype drone uh, of the US. So Trump did not relate, did not retaliate through uh, physical means, but he made sure to get back to them by putting on trade related sanctions. So another reason why the market uh, was dragged down, uh, especially today, this week is because of the S&P and Moody's growth downgrade. So, so as for the S&P, uh, our growth was downgraded uh, to 6.1% um, this year. So that's the lower end of the government's target of 6% to 7%. So fun fact is that's actually our year end target as well. Correct. For GDP, it's at 6.1%. As for Moody, it's... Um, in terms of sentiment as what will happen to the second quarter GDP, it downplayed of what may actually be, should have been a recovery. So that should weigh down in our expectations, at least 
lowered our expectations in terms of the second quarter GDP. So that uh, what dragged the market, uh, especially this week. So um, some of the key factors that these two are currently looking into is the delayed passage of the budget, the trade war, and um, the current geopolitical tensions that's currently happening in the country. And lastly, uh, there was a bit of a net foreign selling due to the downweight of the Philippines in the FTSE index or the Financial Times Stock Exchange. Uh, recall that last May, we also have the same occurrence. It's called the MSCI rebalancing, but this time what rebalance is the FTSE. So you we won't feel it as much because uh, the FTSE rebal is smaller as compared to the MSCI. But the thing is, the FTSE rebal happens on a quarterly basis as compared to the MSCI, which only happens uh, two times or semi-annually. So now that we knew what, ha what dragged the market, I'm going to tell you what supported the market. So first, we have the US Fed and ECB issued dovish statements. Okay, so what we mean by dovish? So there are two terms, like we have dovish and hawkish. So for dovish, it, what it means is that they plan to lower interest rates in the near future. So it supported our market because lower rates means um, weakening of their currency. So for the likes of US dollar weakened, the dollar weakened because of the dovish statement. So it actually made peso stronger. stronger. So that actually supported the PSEI. So as for the ECB, it, it, um, to be specific, what they said was besides the possibility of um, lowering rates, they might um, buy more bonds. So that's actually a dovish um, statement to support their economy, which is currently struggling as of the moment. By the way, ECB pertains to the central banks in Europe. Okay. Okay. Yes. So next is the, we have the BSP keeping policy rates and our, our steady. So in terms of the, the important uh, factor what, of what they said in the meeting is they lowered the inflation forecast. They revised it downwards to 2.7% in 2019 and 2.9% 2 in 2020. So mm -hmm. in terms of the importance is we know that there's, um, because of the high inflation last year, uh, it's time to inflation to at least um, be steady a bit. So that actually supported the market. So now that we know the fundamental reason why the market went down, I mean up, let's go to the technical reasons. So again, recall that I mentioned a moment ago that even though the month ended flattish, the month isn't is actually quite volatile. So in the first week, we saw the market went up. The second week, it went down. Then on the third week, it made some recoveries. And it lastly, today, it made some corrections. So the first week, um, this is just a continuation of the bullish rally which happened in May. This is a correction from the MSCI and the trade war. And from there on, it has been consolidating between 8,150 and 7,850. Actually, at around 7,900. 7,850 could be stretching it out um, quite a bit. But uh, for our recommendation for July, as of the moment, with no further catalyst intact, we are we are seeing the markets to consolidate per, consolidate further between the 8150 and the 79, uh, 7850 levels. So, what do we have to watch out for uh, this July? Okay. So, on Friday, next Friday, we have the release of the inflation number. Um, so. Well, if you will know, you will notice that for the past um, few months, that in terms of when the BSP or rather when the inflation number was released, in terms of market reaction, it's not that uh, it's muted. It's muted. It's mainly because it's already been priced in that inflation is expected to be lower um, in the next few months. But I think what's important to note here, as what we've mentioned um, to our clients, is you always look at the estimate. So at the est the estimate is at 2.9%. So should inflation go above the estimate, the 
the market uh, may go down. So keep in mind that we have two estimates. So first is we have the Bloomberg estimate at 2.9% and the central bank estimate at 22 to 3%. So safe to say, if inflation goes above 3.1 or 3.2, the market will go down. Just to add up, no, the BSP estimate of 2.2% to 3.0% was actually just released a moment ago. So this is quite fresh, but the fact that the BSP said that they're going, that they are expecting uh, inflation figures to be within this range means they are pegging inflation to be lower as compared to just last month. So that's something to look forward to. Okay, another thing to look out for is the G20 summit in the US-China trade developments. The G20 summit per se is not really something that you'd look into normally, but what is interesting about this meeting is because of the meeting of the two heads of state, which is in question, which is both US and China. As we both, as we all, as all of us know, the ongoing trade developments is causing quite a ruckus in this market. And if, although also, there are news that ahead of the G20 summit, uh, both parties have already agreed to a so-called truce, but we are still uh, anticipating further developments, which will depend on the meeting uh, tomorrow. So our take, uh, US might not budge um, because there will be an uh, there will be an upcoming US election, and um, the president. Donald Trump will have to maintain a strong facade such that uh, he doesn't he will not give in to his demands and uh, he needs to maintain that strong figure so I don't think he will compromise he will make a compromise agreement with China on the other hand China needs to save face so this is going to be quite um, quite a show uh, actually so all of this, whatever would happen, will definitely affect the market as early as Monday. And, okay, uh, let's go to first quarter, uh, second quarter 2019 earnings. Um, actually, the earnings season will begin in August, but some companies will already, are already go, is already going to release their earnings as early as the end of the month. A uh, particular example would be Avoid this Power and Avoid this Equity Ventures. Also, Meralco will be releasing theirs, I think, as well. Um, so as we all know, uh, the quarter earnings is always a significant factor in uh, equities trading and analysis and valuations because that will gauge the estimates, uh, that will gauge the actual performance of the company and the analyst expectations. If the actual performance of the company is better compared to analyst estimates, chances are the stock will go up and vice versa. Yeah. Um, as for the earnings in terms of expectations, so we we believe that um, if you look at the other brokerages um, expectations, it all it's always double digit. We have to keep in mind that the first quarter alone it's at the around eight percent, six to eight percent, and what dragged that um, earnings is the hold or the holdings company, holdings company. So very good to note that um, second quarter is the likes of the MC AEV. So those are the companies that you should watch out for because they have um, come out um, lower than expected last quarter. So in terms of the earnings that have outperformed, you have the likes of first gen and the like so fundamentals and technicals uh, safe to say F gen is quite good but then again it's very important to look at the fundamentals and that's why it's very important to know um, their performance in the first half and the second and or the second quarter 2019 so for our stock picks we have uh, mega world we have updated our target price uh, it's six pesos seventy cents. But if we're going to look uh, into the upside, it's already uh, it's only going to trade at around nine point eight percent upside as compared to its last closing price of six pesos and uh, ten cents. 
Again, reason for the buy call for Mega World, as always, is because of the expansion of its recurring income base. Recall that it always has a mall and office segment, and it's actually quite performing well also. And it's still continuing to develop its townships, and uh, so far, the land valuations are also good as well, especially on the office side. Oh, on the office side because demand for office is still ongoing even though we see some uh, uh, slowdowns on the BPO units it is still being uh, replenished by the Pogo unit the Pogos or the Philippine offshore gaming operators which is uh, an addition a possible additional recurring income for Mega world Again, reiterating our buy pick for DM Wenceslao, our target price is 13 pesos and 20 cents, which interestingly, as of the moment, already has a 35.4% upside compared to its last closing price. Again, reason for the buy call is because of the potential increase in land values of the MOA area, and there is also strategic posi uh, there is strategic positioning in the Bay City. Recall that as of the, um, most of the MW's office units are being leased by the POGOs, and it is quite strategic in the sense that um, there's it's beginning to have uh, it's already beginning to have uh, a Chinese community within that vicinity, and not to mention that the property is located near the casinos, which is quite. Uh, in demand for the Chinese players who are also workers uh, in offices of BMW. As for the banks, our top pick would be uh, BDO. Our target price is 150 pesos, which only has around 7.1% upside. Uh, this is basically because of the RRR cuts. So for every 1% cut, we expect an increase of 2% uh, in its full year 2019 earnings. Actually, we compared all the banks. Uh, we've conducted our sensitivity, sensitivity analysis, and it showed that um, BDO is the most sensitive in terms of the, the reserve requirement ratio cuts. Okay, as for... Our top uh, in terms of upside, this is uh, the stock with the most upside. So we like Megawide. Um, so we've been staying Megawide um, ever since. Um, if you notice that Megawide before was a construction engineering company, well, it is still a construction engineering company now. But in terms of earnings, it's 50% um, of its profits is already coming from uh, the Mactan Cebu International Airport. So that is welcoming, giving its diversification to, to the infrastructure side and the tourism side. That's why it's a proxy for infrastructure and tourism pay. So it's going to benefit in the next, at least in the next three years, given the government's ramp up of the infrastructure program and given our welcoming towards the Chinese community. And that will help, that would definitely help our tourism. So given that, uh, our target price for megawatt is at 29.10 pesos. That's actually a 53% upside. So if you think you're late in this stock, you're, you're, you're not. So it's good to buy as of the moment for the long-term investors. Just a, bit of a tech, uh, just a bit of addition just on its technical side, the price action side. Uh, you might see that the prices of megawatt has already, uh, is already beginning to go up because it has already tested its support level at around 18 pesos and 50 cents. I think it's already 19 pesos 10 cents or 19 pesos as of the last closing price. So uh, with the current momentum being intact, chances are it might again retest the resistance levels at around 20 pesos. So our, for our consumer pick, oh, we like pure gold. So. Our target price for Google is at 54 pesos. That's actually a 20% uh, upside compared to today's closing price. So to be specific, given the waning inflation or the inflation number being steady, so it's good to note that 
given the lower price of rice, that would actually foster traffic growth for pure gold. So it also boosts consumption in the in pure gold's target market, so low to mid uh, mid income households. So it's pretty obvious that when prices are high, those are the um, income levels that are being hit. So besides that, it's no theory that pure gold owns um, the warehouse um, business SNR. Um, for SNR, in terms of competition, namely landries, their plan is less aggressive compared to SNR. So that should help um, the pure gold uh, company itself. So it is no theory that the last first quarter, uh, the SNR business grew its profit by a 20%. So in terms of contribution to the pure gold business, it's beginning to be significant already. Uh, this this is a pick of our research partner, DBS Speakers, the Development Bank of Singapore. They are betting on they are putting a buy call for Cebu Pacific Air, Cebu Air Inc. Uh, reason is that uh, DBS believes that the valuations are already undemanding. It's, I think it's already trading at around 1.2 times as compared to the regionals of around 1.5 or 1.6 times price to book ratio uh, moving forward. And uh, also, if you're going to look at their expansion plans, the new aircrafts are already equipped with um, engines. Eh, I mean, the aircraft is already uh, built to have higher capacity and the engines have uh, lower fuel burn, uh, lower higher high efficiency it's more efficient in terms of dual burn so that means if you, i'm going that means a company will have to save on jet fuel costs because the airplanes are now running in a more efficient manner not to mention that uh, they're still ramping up their fleet right now the air i right now i think they, they already have around 70 airplanes and they're still ordering uh, around 20 more uh, to the Boeing company. And not to mention, there's still a tourism play in the country because according to estimates, the tourism, the Philippine tourism is still growing at double digit pace around 10% annually. So with the higher tourists, uh, with higher tourist arrivals, chances are airplanes will also benefit from this. Okay, so besides uh, our buy picks, we also have stocks that uh, we recommend to lighten position or sell. So the first is uh, URC. Um, at the first place, um, in, compared to its peers, it's already trading at an expensive um, valuation. So given its earnings that are, well, if you take a look at the first quarter, it's slightly recovering, but at the end of the day, is it going to be sustainable? Because what we're seeing is input costs are rising, there's tight competition, and their plan is to continue to spend on advertising and promotion. So they have to they have to have a winner. They have to have this kind of product that is going to boost them moving forward. Because in terms of their branded consumer food segment, it's it's still um, um, relatively weak. So it needs a winner. And our target price is around 106. So there. Next is we have Jollibee. You know? So for Jollibee, the problem with Jollibee is um, in terms of its um, cost, there's no question about the sales. The sales are okay. But in terms of how it controls its cost, that's where the problem is. So first is in terms of manpower. So we know that there's um, higher minimum wage, um, which is going to be mostly felt uh, this year. So that's going to hit the company in terms of its full year numbers. So that's um, that's for Jollibee. So of course, that's why we're putting um, sell picks or sell calls on stocks because we suggest that you lighten position on those stocks and put in put it in other stocks that have 
that are going to outperform, hence our stock, our buy calls earlier. So that's all. We are open now to question questions from you guys. Okay, so we have questions here. Um, these are just for stocks, so I would assume uh, if uh, a stock has been mentioned, I would answer it on a tactical level, meaning I'm going to use technical analysis. So first question, uh, first for stocks actually is uh, an outlook for pure gold, CHP, mega wide, and house. I think I've already answered mega wide. I've mentioned that uh, the price has already been uh, let's go to mega wide first. There, correct. All right now it's already trading at 19 pesos and two cents. Yes, but the support level is still considered uh, still around here. This is 1880. I'm going to give it a stretch. It can have it can maintain a support level at around 1850. Uh, yes, I've mentioned that it's beginning to correct upward. I actually tested the 20 peso resistance this week, but again, it failed to breach the 20 peso resistance level, so it went back to 19 pesos. So for the week, I would expect it to be retested once again to 18 pesos and 80 cents as to the moment. If it breaks down, uh, let's give it space until 18.50. Otherwise, it would have to go down further. Now, going back on its fundamentals, mentioned that we recall that as of first quarter of 2019, it has lower uh, net income because of the lower construction revenues, but we have to take note that the lower construction revenues is attributable to uh, the client's fault that they were not able to secure the proper business permit so that uh, Megaway was not able to construct yet. But as soon as the clients were able to get the necessary permits, the construction would begin immediately and the uh, uh, accounting treat the recognition can be the revenue recognition will have to go on um, once uh, which will depend on the percentage of completion so that's it for mega wide next stock would be pure gold pure gold right now is currently enjoying a healthy consolidation with slight downward bias we're still pegging the support level at around 44 pesos but the resistance level is only at around 46.40 so i would suggest uh, you trade the range between 44 and 46. okay uh next for chp yes right now it's already in, uh, right now it has just this week actually it tested was this around three pesos? Sorry, yeah, it actually tried to test a three peso ten cent uh, resistance level, but it went, uh, but somehow it found this resistance level at three pesos and ten cents. Right now it's going back to two pesos ninety cents. Okay, so in terms of the fundamentals for Semex, um, while it rallied, no, no no three it, it rallied because of the technicals but it pulled back uh, because of there was a disclosure where it uh, the the management said that it is still looking to raise capital so it actually um spurred uh, some um, um fear because of the possible sro so that's what uh, is driving ch you now so for those short-term in short-term traders it's good to look at the technicals but be aware and follow your cut loss and the like because should they announce uh, an sro and the like the price uh, chp will drop but as of the moment it still looks attractive so as for house as for house if i think this will depend on your time horizon or on when you entered so but looking at the house, it, it, fifteen fifty support. It's quite strong. It is quite strong. But when you draw, uh, for example, a, long, a line, uh, a trend line, it it seems like it it may have already been broken. So 
that's why I go back to the first point on where you entered. So for, if you just entered, it's very important um, to follow your cut loss. But if you've been holding for so long, it's good to hold because at the end of the day, um, the management, recall, it has a share buyback program and management has only bought back uh, a chunk of, only a, a few of those. So there. As for Fly, for Phil and Westland, so very um, impressive chart. No? It's no really that. Um, for Fly, I think, then again, it's very important on when you enter. Um, for Phil and Westland, at the end of the day, it's still um, cheap compared to its peers. Um, in terms of Phil and Westland, it's the stock um, investors are bullish because of its prospects in Clark City. Uh, in terms of um, technicals, in terms of volume, you can see some participation as the uptrend continues. So good to hold and good to enter at its support levels at around, you can enter as low as 185 already. So that's for fly. As for what's up with PEP, all right? So for Pepsi Cola, so it, it's noteworthy that uh, it broke out um, of its resistance, strong resistance level at around 130, 134 level. So just to bring some fundamentals, um, I think this week it uh, now I, management um, is optimistic that it will have better volumes this year because recall last year it struggled with the implementation of the higher excise tax on sugar sweetened beverages. So it is betting that it will recover this year and hence the bullish price action. So any sell call for SMC? Let us check. Fundamentally, uh, SMC is not part of the coverage of, uh, it's not part of the universe of uh, first metro securities, but if you're just going to look into the charts, it's beginning to retest a support level at around this level, 175 pesos. I would give it another at around 173 pesos as the next support level, but what if it is broken down, we might see it going back to around 165 pesos, but I don't think it will happen because it's currently uh, consolidating between 175 and 180, what's this, 187 pesos level. Um, for those holdings on Miguel Corporation, just be uh, wary because of its earnings release uh, the second quarter, recall in the first quarter that San Miguel Corporation's earnings was not that good because it was dragged by its food, pure foods, and its and its Petron business. So for those long term, please watch for the earnings release this quarter. I think the earnings release of San Miguel Corp will be at around August. Yes. So something to look forward to. Chances are SMC would have to move. Uh, the movement of SMC in relation to the actual earnings of the company might begin by end of July, around two to three weeks before the earnings results kick in. One, okay. Okay, so right now that's the only questions that we have. So. Again, uh, thank you for uh, listening, giving us the time and the opportunity to uh, share with you what we see uh, to this market. So once again, my name is Paul, and uh, this is Royce. And my name is Royce, and thank you, and we're looking forward to your questions next month. So happy second half of the year. So First half of the year. <laughs> okay. Thank you.